Uh, I like to look at this whole YouTube venture as my video game. So I, you know, I played the Xbox games and stuff like that when I was uh, in college, you know, just spending hours and upon hours with my friends and, you know, you, you level up and all that stuff. And that's kind of what YouTube has become. It's like how, all right, this is my game. This is my challenge. How do I level up to the next subscriber milestone? How do I level up to getting more people to watch my videos? Um, you know, is like learning how to make the proper YouTube uh, thumbnails and titles to get the clicks. And that's kind of what drives it. It's just that, okay, what's going to happen tomorrow? Who knows? Uh, a video can have a million views overnight. You never know like that kind of stuff. So it's, it's a little bit of like, yeah, just it's my video game. I spend time doing that instead of playing video games now. <laughs> okay, so it's kind of the thing to get to a next level. That, yeah. And you can, you can define the level yourself in a way. Yeah, I mean, you, you can track your progress. It's just a very... It's a, it's very interesting, you know, to kind of figure out. It's like a puzzle. It's like you're, you're piecing it together and you're seeing it finally come into view and you're like, just, and you're getting better and better and faster at it because you kind of know what pieces to look for. So yeah, it's a, it's a game. Welcome to the 2.5 Conversations Connecting Innovators. My name is Klaus. I'm an innovation coach in Baden-Württemberg in the southwest of Germany. Innovators and creators from around the globe help each other by sharing highs and lows, their motivation and creative passions, as well as their favorite methods, tools and ideas. The name of the podcast comes from the 2.5% innovators from Rogers Diffusion of Innovation Theory. Find more details, all the episodes and transcripts at the2.5.net. Enjoy the show. In this episode of the 2.5 Innovator Podcast, my guest is the Danny Black. He's a musician, a YouTuber reviewing cool gear that comes his way. He's an American living in Australia. I like him because he adds humor to everything he does. He's a smart and funny guy and does especially his YouTube channel different from the rest. My name is Klaus. This is the Danny Black and this is the 2.5 Innovator Podcast. Hello, Danny. Good morning. Good evening. <laughs> hey Klaus, thanks for having me on. Whatever time it is, where you are. This is ah, oh, this always uh, uh, chips me off. Uh, it's uh, evening in Australia and morning in Germany yeah. right now. Yeah, and we just had a funny thing. Uh, it showed that that people in Australia stand the other way around, right? Yeah, we're upside down. We're holding on. Our Zoom window was a bit mixed up. So, okay, thank you for making me smile when learning about new cameras and gear and stuff. And this is how I discovered you on, on the internet on YouTube, Danny. So uh, that's also something that I'd like to talk about with you. But first of all, you're a musician, right? This is what's inside yes. you or what's your main purpose, your main thing? Yes, I've been playing music professionally for about 12 years, starting out on cruise ships. And basically, I kind of like lied my way on the ships. I, I, I knew how to play music before that, but I was never really like a singer and guitar player like that. And um, I was like, I can do it. I'm sure I can. And I got on and you, you play five hours a day, six days a week. So you, you get to learn pretty quickly <laughs> how, to, how to do it. <laughs> Okay, sounds like a tough gig uh, playing on a cruise ship. Uh, actually, no, it's it's amazing. It's uh, a lot of fun, just an easy life, no worries. You just got to show up, play your music, and, uh, you know, a lot of times get free drinks, and it's, uh, that's how it works. <laughs> okay, we, you, you, you have documented uh, some of that uh, on your YouTube yeah, channel, Yeah, yes, right? on my so YouTube channel, yeah. You can check that out. We'll we'll put the link in in the show notes in the description. And uh, uh, by the way, I like the way you say that on your YouTube videos, and I can't repeat that because I'm just not as funny as you are. But uh, uh, you you have found a, a very special way to to uh, make people aware of these things that are. Um, so we'll put all these links in the show notes. Let's put it that way. No, no, I appreciate it. I, honestly, I don't usually get that kind of feedback, so uh, that's that's really uh, comforting to hear. I I do appreciate that. 
We need to talk about the musician thing, and I'd, I'd like to do that. But first of all, I found out about you because I'm researching a lot about microphones and, and, and cameras uh, to get good quality, a good quality podcast. And uh, what, what made me aware of you was, I think you, you had a video about using a, a GoPro as a webcam, and that was not the usual thing at the time. And so I thought, well, that's a smart guy. He discovered something, and he's talking about something that nobody else is doing. In a way, that was also entertaining. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was a very fun video to make, yeah. And I, I find it, um, it's, a, it's a good thing when you use, when you're talking about a product and like the feature of the product and you use it throughout like the video, for instance, I was using that as a webcam. I didn't really want to shoot on like a higher quality camera and then be like, by the way, this is what the webcam looks like and it's going to look like crap compared, you know? But when you're always on that medium, it looks really cool. Same with mics. When I'm doing a microphone review, I like to be using that microphone throughout the whole video. Otherwise, it's just a bit weird going from a really like high quality microphone to something that might be like a $30 one that you're reviewing. And it's like, it makes it sound worse when it's probably a really good microphone. You just, you know, you don't want to have the direct comparison, I guess. So you like to keep things real also. I like to keep them real. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and that's fascinating. Uh, see, that, that, there's this mix. You say you you, you are very re you have a very relaxed style, um, and uh, and it's humorous. Uh, you say I like to review things that come my way, which is kind of a tongue in cheek invitation to send you stuff. Yeah, <laughs> you got that. Yep, yep. And uh, you know, to be careful what you wish for in that, because I'll get things. I get so many things sometimes. Uh, it became overwhelming for a little bit. It was just like piling up and I tried to at least do one review a day and I couldn't even keep up with all of that. So I had to like, you know, tell people, uh, like if it was something that's probably not going to do good for my channel, I'm like, nah, maybe not that. But, uh, yeah, this one, this for the listeners, this one came today. Uh, they watched a, a recent gimbal review I did and they were like, oh, our gimbal's better than that. So they sent me this one and this thing is a beast. It's called Scorp C. I haven't even used it yet. Just got it today. So I'm excited to try that one. <laughs> that gives me a reason to produce this podcast before you do the video. Oh, it's going to be a while. Like, see, that's the thing is I have so many products to get to. And also you want to sprinkle in those videos that are going to do well for your channel. Like in my case, you know, GoPro uh, tips or something like that. So you, it can't just be all product. You want to kind of sprinkle in a few things that are going to, you know, keep the channel going. <laughs> <laughs> I see. And I think that's a kind of a, a very special thing to, to get an understanding of what your audience likes. And does it help you to be a musician, uh, to be a good YouTuber also? Uh, you know what? I actually think that does help as far as when I'm, I'm putting the music underneath the videos. Like I try to use a lot of just bass and drum, but you can kind of get good timing for when the clips change. Um, and then also like there's times where I'll actually speed ramp down at the end just to kind of hold it out a little bit and then I'll bring it back in. Um, and I, you know, I, I think anyone that appreciates music can do that as well and not just be a good musician. So, um, uh, yeah, that, that definitely helps though. But, but it's also probably something that is in your mind that you're, uh, thinking about your audience, which you have to do all the time if you do, a, if you're yeah. a live musician, right. But uh, as a YouTuber, yeah, you don't true. have that direct feedback. Yeah, I feel like I'm having a therapy session. Like I, I never even thought about these things. So <laughs> it's kind of nice you're, you're, uh, you're getting me to think about the the way that I do things. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm an innovation coach. I have to do these things. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> But, of course. Uh, okay, your slogan on on Facebook is is I'm here to entertain, and uh, I I discovered that uh, when doing research on you, and. I think that's a very good thing to do uh, or a very good goal to have. I'm here to entertain because if you can do so many things with that uh, slogan or with that motto, yeah. uh, you can do the musician thing, you can do the YouTube thing, you, you might do even something else, right? Uh, yeah. Because everything that you do is, uh, is about entertaining others. Yeah. And I, you know, I think that that's what social media should be. You know, a way to entertain and inform in a way, but it's just like, it shouldn't be a place to complain. It should be a place to entertain, you know, that way. That's why people are looking, you know. So that's that's kind of my motto when it comes to social media. And I've seen very weird things. Uh, uh, for example, the Naughty Boys I just uh, uh, discovered. 
<laughs> and the naughty is the nautical thing, but I yeah, just nautical. play with words. And buoys, like like buoys, like a, it was a, a little trio I was putting together for because the cruise ships are coming back to Australia and we're going to be doing like a trio gig. And and um, I also have a duo gig. Uh, we're we're kind of workshopping the name and we're, we're going to be, I think we're working with uh, the Dorchestra. <laughs> because we, we kind of we look like dorks, but the music's really cool, and uh, we're going to uh, to America to play a country music festival of all things. So that's going to be uh, a hoot and a half. <laughs> okay, L let's go back to that musician thing. Uh, so you're an American. You're living in Australia, but you're sort of going around all the time. In a way, uh, you do the videos uh, to show that on your YouTube channel, uh, where you also review some gear and uh, where you sort of have different dimensions. Uh, let's put it that way. You also have the music channel on YouTube. And it's really fascinating to see the development of this. Uh, let's if you go back like uh, two or three years, you started uh, seriously reviewing the, the gear. But before that, you, you show all these YouTube things. You, you, have, you were trying to do uh, a vlog for a while uh, yeah. and so on. So, so there is, uh, you, you were experimenting with the medium, uh, uh, I think. Yeah, well, because my life back when I started YouTube was a lot of traveling. And I thought uh, it was, first of all, a good way to, you know, kind of show my family back home what I was up to and all the cool things that are happening out in Australia or wherever I'm traveling. So it was, a, it was kind of a travel vlog. And, uh, you know, when traveling kind of stopped for a couple of years, I was just like, well, I mean, just review some products. And then it's, it's I learned really quickly that when you niche down, your channels grow so much more. So not so much on Facebook or Instagram. Those are kind of just, I'm not, I don't really push as hard on, on those just because I don't see a good return on the investment, if you will. But uh, YouTube, especially like when, as soon as I started um, just niching down, I, you know, doubled my subscriber count. I went from like 9,000 to uh, like 20,000 very quickly. So that's, that's something that you have to do. Like when people ask me like, uh, what, you know, what should my channel be about? I'm like, well, what do you want it to be about? And they're like, well, I want it to be about cooking and tattoos. And I'm like, no, if you say, and you're probably not going to grow, you got to pick one or the other. I mean, you can obviously mm -hmm. have a little bit of influence, but you got to keep, uh, keep that, keep niche down if you want to grow. You sort of found that niche for you in a, in an experimental way. And, uh, uh yes. You, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> and you, you show a lot of your your music also, which which seems fun. I, I mean, I, I'd like to be there once uh, in a live concert. Uh, unfortunately, the US and cruise ships in Australia are a bit far away from Germany. So, Very any far. plans to come like to Europe? Uh, no, <laughs> no plans. Um, I have been out that way. I did a Mediterranean cruise ship actually, and that was that was a, a fun time. But. Uh, I'd like to come out there, but I'm also doing a lot of live streams coming up as well. Yeah. Um, so like music streams uh, where if you put headphones on, it'll sound like you're there. And, uh, you know, that'll be a good way to connect to it. And uh, and then you can request songs and stuff, too. So I watched uh, part of that Naughty Bo Boys uh, <laughs> concert online and it was fun, right? And it was a bit over the top i will give you that it was a bit like we you know the green screen work was supposed to be kind of shoddy just because we, obviously we we're not trying to say we're on a cruise ship but we wanted to make it look like it was a bit silly um <laughs> but yeah it'll get more fun yeah we'll provide a, a link to that in the in the show notes and because it was funny it was humorous it was something different it was not just music and it kind of shows uh, a sense of humor that doesn't take himself yourself too serious and i think that shows also with your youtube videos you're not preaching uh the best of gopro or whatever you're sort of uh, finding cool ways to use all these things and uh, and have a different angle on on, on things and uh, and i like that a lot because it's not just the normal gopro standard you uh, youtube video yeah well you know that's funny about a lot of these products is i feel like they're just relying on youtube to be their guide so like they don't come out with any you know any manuals on how to use it or, or things like that, but everyone has to kind of get it and discover it. 
And I will say that's one of my favorite things about being a tech reviewer on YouTube is, you know, if I got a GoPro before that, I would just probably play with a few settings and then just never try anything else. But when you're trying to get in there and see what each thing does and you make a video about it to show other people, you learn really quickly how to use it inside and out. And that goes with all the products that I review. It's like, you're not just trying one thing and going, oh, that's cool. You actually, oh, what does that? Oh, it does that. Oh, wow. Cool. And then you think of all these creative ways that you can use it and then show people uh, how to use it as well. Okay. If you're curious, you'll go into the depth of these menus. And if you're creative, you do all these extra videos, right? And that's what that's right. you do. That's right. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's not what, what everybody does. And that's, that's very refreshing also. So you're experimenting a lot with that. And uh, you can see that on the videos. If you sort of look back every 10th video, you see differences in the way, for example, you do the, the intro. It's getting more more professional dare i say it's it's getting more nailed down it's yeah when you kind of find that groove and especially like i said you have a lot of videos to review it's like uh you know you try you try to change it up every now and then but when some of my favorite youtubers that i watch like it's it's nice when they you know when they have the same lines a lot it's like it kind of sticks with you and yep. you, you don't want them to change those lines so i'm trying to create that kind of branding It's also a fun way to do this than, than the normal things that you have to do as the YouTuber, right? You have to sort of subscribe. tell people to <laughs> like and subscribe and whatever. And what, what I'm asking myself is, uh, pe haven't people understood that they're supposed to do all these things yet? <laughs> um, but but it's the way you do it is, is very refreshing. It's relaxed. And so, uh, you make it funny in a way. You do you add some some uh, uh, effects and so 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 I kind of I, I like that. And I, the first time I saw you showing your name tag with a swipe on your chest, I really like that. Yeah. Well, stuff like that. But but then you have uh, you're working on on these things. You're improving on that in parallel to doing all your musician things. Um, you you had a you, you do you play all the time. Um, cruise ships are coming back, so at some point of time you probably will be playing on cruise ships again. Yeah, I got some already booked. <laughs> uh, it's it's tricky. Um, the to be honest with you. Uh, fi financially speaking, YouTube has done so well um, where I'm actually almost doubling what I'm making as a musician on YouTube. And so I would like to almost phase out the music a little bit more so I have a little bit more time uh, to do other things. But um, I just never say no to the gigs. <laughs> I'm always like, oh, future Danny's going to be mad about that. But I don't know. You know, he'll deal with that. And then future Danny has to play that gig. And he's like, oh. I don't, you know, some gigs are great. Some gigs aren't. So you just kind of, uh, you, you know, you don't need to take them all, but I do. <laughs> so, <laughs> and yeah, so it's, it's really cool to see it grow. And I'm actually looking into actually moving from a room to an actual like, um, office space that kind of looks like the, I would say it's like the Casey Neistat office of Brisbane here. Um, It's going to be really cool. So I'm looking into that, uh, expanding a little bit. You know, you kind of outgrow a room. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I will, whatever, wherever I go, I'm going to still make it look like this. You know, mm -hmm. like I'm in a home reviewing. I don't want it to be like, hey, look, I'm in this big studio thing and I'm so cool. <laughs> you know? I'm a production company right now with 10 yeah. people and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I, but I kind of, I like the vibe that uh, your studio, uh, your room uh, has right now with, and it shows a, a multifaceted personality with uh, instruments, with a skateboard, with uh, pictures and stuff like that. It's Make not sure. overcrowded, but it, it has, has that um, uh, a gig kind of vibe, I think, with a, a stage kind of vibe also. Yeah, I think when you, the video you stumbled upon, I used to have like a brick wallpaper. Yes. Um, and I loved that brick wallpaper look, but it was starting to like kind of get disconnected a little bit. Like it was coming unglued and I was just like, oh, you know what? Let's try something different. And I was just like, let's just go uh, paint it and all that. But uh, just so you know, probably in about two hours, I have a new video coming on that's actually my desk tour. Like everything that I have uh, for my monitors and camera and lights and speakers and everything that's on my desk and my desk. So that video is actually going to be coming up. Uh, so it's already out by now from when the podcast is released, but uh, I think you'll enjoy seeing that. 
We'll add a link in the show notes. <laughs> So that's your that's your tagline. No, we'll no, no. I, I didn't find anything yet, right? It's uh, I, sh I probably should do all these things. It's just too much um, to to do all these details uh, with the two podcasts and the job and and stuff like that. I'm I'm I try to enjoy the conversation as much as possible and then do it as well as possible for the listeners. Okay, so so that sounds like fun. You are working on, on your product, let's put it that way. That's kind of also working on yourself in a way. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and it, it's also uh, going back and forth between music, between uh, between the YouTubing thing. Is there anything else that you do, like uh, like another type of hobby or profession or something? I uh, definitely got into the, like the electric skateboard riding. Um, that's always a lot of fun just to go out and and uh you know get with other people and go for like rides and uh stop and have some coffee and and chats um other than, i mean definitely i haven't really uh developed any new hobbies uh I've, i've literally this has been taking up so much time but you know i have a wife and a dog and you know got to um do some you know family quality time every now and then and Uh, we have a house, so it's, yeah, it's like another thing you have to kind of like look after and, uh, you know, it all, it's like, I'm an adult now. <laughs> <laughs> When did that happen? When did that happen? How old are yeah. you, by the way? I actually will be the big four O at the end of the year. I'm turning 40 years old. Jeez. 40 oh, years. Yeah. Oh my God. Life is ending. I know. Wait, how old are you? <laughs> <laughs> over 50 <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right well there, you know that you're giving me some hope right now there we go <laughs> thank you <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay so so you're an adult now but i can I'm very just now well, uh, yeah i can very well relate uh, to that uh, uh i i think i had something similar when i didn't feel uh, adult is adult 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 like until 40 That's good. That's bad. I don't know. And it might be that uh, it shows that there's a sort of a sheltered life uh, also. Yeah. I, you know, I think uh, our, like the boomer, the like the, our parents, basically they didn't want to grow up. So they kept us being children. And so we never really grew up, <laughs> okay. you know? And so that's why it's like, oh, well, I'm getting a gray hair in my beard. Uh, you know what? Maybe I'm an adult now. I don't know. You know, so I think I think that's literally what happened. Sounds like a good explanation. Just blame it on the parents. <laughs> exactly. Always. No problem. <laughs> okay. How did you end up in Australia? You're an American. I know. <laughs> so I was working on a cruise ship in Australia and uh, my wife now, um, she was working on the same cruise ship and she was actually living next door to me and we just hit it off and... Um, Yeah, we, uh, we traveled the States together and we were going to do more cruise ships in Australia. And so we were like, well, let's just um, we'll move to Australia. And, you know, so we lived together in Australia. Uh, I mean, ever since, really, we didn't know what, you know, we we're kind of open to any kind of travel or plans um, for living other places. But uh, just Brisbane's pretty cool. I like it out here. Never been there. Uh, have met lots of Australians, and I, I kind of like that laid-back vibe that many people have. And it's probably part of being so far away from everybody else. I th there, there is that, but I also think it's you know it's a warmer climate up ah, here, at least. Yeah. So usually people in like the warmer climates are a little bit more laid back because it's too hot to you know to to run a run amok or something like that. <laughs> So you're the uh, the musician. You have uh, sort of the the YouTube thing um, where you review gear, and uh, that developed over time. And it's sort of getting into a mix. Do you have any plans, like to to sort of mix that even further, like uh, sing reviews or something like that? <laughs> uh, no, I, I, yeah, I just I actually I made a music channel, uh, so it's Danny Black Music and. Um, that's kind of where I was, I was like, you know what, let's keep it separated. Like I said, when you niche mm -hmm. down, it, it really works. So, um, every now and then I'll, I'll post something on it. Just like, Hey, I, if you want to come over and listen to some music over here. Yeah. Um, but like after, after things kind of picked back up, you know, the bars were opening actually here, it wasn't shut down very much. 
Um, so I've been really busy with gigs. Uh, a lot of months I'm playing five gigs a week. Um, and then so, so when you start doing these kind of videos, you're like not really wanting to play any, any music. You're just like, all right, I, I've done that a lot now. Let me do something else, you know? So, um, but, and I think also, I, I, you know, I'm getting, I'm getting older as we've established I, my <laughs> thoughts of like being a famous musician have fleeted a long time ago. So I'm not really trying to push myself as some kind of, yeah, you know, famous musician. I see what you mean. But you're sort of trying to control your own fate as a musician, I think. You're you, you don't give up. You don't you do your thing. You always develop. You start new things like the Dorchestra or the Naughty it's a good Boys. Name, Dorchestra. <laughs> it's a good name. <laughs> it, it came I from like is it a duo, like a duo orchestra. And they were okay. like Dorchestra. Dorchestra. <laughs> right. It could be with an apostrophe or something like that. Uh, orchestra you put the little dots them. over the o and it's like it looks ikea like an ikea furniture <laughs> right you, you use the umlauts of uh, like uh, german or you, some european languages um, <laughs> but, um i hope you secured the the web uh, the, the the web domain uh no actually so somebody this you know that's that's the thing that sucks nowadays is you think of like an idea or like a brand and you have to search it first you're like hey i got a great name orchestra and then you look it up and it's like all right there's a a band called the orchestra mm. but they don't play any music anymore and every if they post a video on youtube it's 10 views so how serious are they about the orchestra you know what i mean like yep. So, but yeah, I've yeah. done that like for a long time where you just you think of an idea and then you're like, let me look it up. Nope, it's taken. <laughs> yeah. And it's kind of frustrating in a way because you're so into that name or into that whatever. It yeah. took you so long also yeah. to decide. On, yeah, I know know that a lot from, from other projects. Uh, but still, um, it's it's sort of the, the website is kind of the home of, of uh, your online creative uh, endeavors. Uh, it's kind of important to have. Um, let's go back to to that. I mean, you are, you are, you're, you're sort of. The internet allows us to to be to have a, a global brand a, or a global audience in a way. Potentially, everybody on the earth could watch your videos, right? Yeah. Not everybody does, but that's not a problem, I think. And uh, but still, you have to live with that. There's other Danny Blacks uh, uh, in the world. There's a, there's a lot of them, actually. Right? Uh, I, it's the same with Klaus Reichert. There's a lot of them. That's why I say I'm Doctor Klaus Reichert because there's nice. less than uh, than that on the world. Um, but that's something. Uh, how how do you do stuff like that? You are one person. Uh, you have in so in a way limited capacities and resources. It's not like Disney who can buy up brands and 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 so on. What is your your reasoning behind uh, your naming and or uh, for example your channel or or your your Facebook or or maybe a domain name and stuff like that? How how do you approach that? Oh uh, yeah, well. The first thing was like dannyblack.com. Some realtor had it, and I was like, hey, like, are you doing anything with this? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, okay, so never mind. Uh, then I actually went and you introduced me as the Danny Black, which is funny because that was kind of my first brand of name was the Danny Black dot com. Mm -hmm. And which doesn't, it's not online anymore. No, it's not online anymore. But then it went to, um, Where is Danny Black? Because as I was being a travel vlogger, um, I thought it was easier to, because it was going to be like Danny Black vlogs or even with the Danny Black, people get confused. Like, oh, do I type the? Um, and so I was like, where's Danny Black? It's easier to just say, hey, go to whereisdannyblack.com. And then um, now it's actually being developed. It's called um, uh, mrblackreviews.com. And... Uh, Danny Black Reviews was actually taken, funny enough. So we we play on that. There's like a Simpsons reference in there. Where it's like Mr. Black. And that's yeah. kind of where I where I took that. And so it's kind of cool. Yeah, it's being developed. And I think one of the things that's going to help that grow is I'm going to be doing this whole GoPro guide where people can click on it and they can see, you know, exactly. I You know, I never considered this, but there's so many people buying their first GoPro right now mm -hmm. that have no idea where to start. And people, like someone that I've known from before, they got theirs. And I was like, ask me any questions I want to know, mm -hmm. because I want to know what new people are wanting to make, wanting to learn and what they're going to be searching for. And um, that's why I started bringing back like 
tips for beginners on GoPro. And cause I was like, for me, it's like, you know, how to yeah. get the SD card out. Now that's easy. I know that, but somebody literally had that question. They're like, do I, how do I pull it out? Oh, you got to push it in first. So it's just, <laughs> it's, it's funny stuff like that, you know? Sorry, that was kind of off topic, I guess, from the website and domains, but yeah. <laughs> not, not a problem because it, it shows, uh, I mean, we, we talked, this is an innovator slash creator innovation podcast, right? So we are talking also about the ways you get to your ideas that you uh, find out what's what's important to to the people that are using it. Uh, and it's, it's, a, it's one of these uh, important things to talk to your audience, to your customers, to potential customers, uh, maybe have one or two or 10 uh, around you that help you develop uh, new things uh, uh, very closely. So that's right on the point. Thanks. So thank you for that. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> because that's the point, right? As an expert, you don't know about the things that the non-experts uh, normally uh, have troubles with. Yeah, exactly. And I think that that's what happens to a lot of tech reviewers. They, For one, they get jaded by the tech. So they go, oh, this is like just the same camera as last time, but just a little bit better. And it's like, to me, I, I want to be like, it's a little bit better. I didn't even think that these things could get better. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's everything. And you have, then you understand like there's revolutionary updates and then there's evolutionary updates where it's like, it evolves from the iPhone one to the iPhone 13. That's a huge difference. But when you're going from each one, you get little minor differences. And, um, I think that, yeah, you don't, you just don't want to be jaded by the tech. But, but I know what you mean. And Bill Gates uh, said it some probably years ago. He said, nothing changes in a year, but everything changes in 10 years. Yeah, that's that. Exactly. That's exactly it. And I, I also understand what you mean. I, I followed another podcaster that did uh, the reviewing, a uh, review of gear and stuff. And uh, he became very, very jaded and i think that's a good word uh because he, and he kind of lost track of of what was normal but uh, that also transported him in in uh, the way of like 15 million uh, uh, followers on youtube and talking to uh, tim cook and stuff like that directly and and that's also that there is a place for that but uh, it wasn't interesting for me anymore yeah wait w which uh, youtuber would that be <laughs> i wouldn't want to say it on <laughs> I feel like you're talking about Unbox Therapy, but... No, but I, right. I also like Unbox Therapy, and I'm not sure if I like the, the progression they had, but uh, I understand that these things happen. Yeah. But they don't have to happen. I think that that's the thing, is you have to keep yourself from getting to that point and just kind of refresh your brain and, and uh, you know keep thinking about the new people that will that are getting this camera and they you know they didn't have all these other cameras that to choose from mm -hmm. they got this one you know go with that <laughs> right and there's a new version oh no i can't spend another 500 euros on on another camera yet again for example and stuff like that that is just a not normal standard life uh yeah, yeah. okay i uh, understand so but let's go back to the branding thing um, you, because I think branding is very, very important for uh, innovation, and it's very, very important for uh, being recognized, right? So that's not nothing new uh, here. Uh, but it's very difficult to do if you are like a, a small company, if you are a single creator. Do you have like any any tips that that help you, uh, or that might help others uh, uh, in the branding section? I. Uh, my any learnings? My biggest tips, my biggest tips are, well, for one, niche down. That's huge. But um, just make videos, upload them. Don't think too hard about it. Like there's people that come up with all these ideas for videos, but never get done, never do them because they're mm -hmm. just thinking about how to make it perfect. Make the videos. You know, you can always make a video again if you want to, but you learn and grow so much more after you've experienced it. Like if you look back on the earlier tech reviews, it's a lot different than what you see now, like where even the sound is better. Uh, you know, you just get a, a more understanding about what people want to see. You're more succinct. And that's, that's an important thing to me. People get bored. It's a TikTok generation now where they swipe after like, you know, 15 seconds. So get to the point of the, of the video that you're making like the thumbnail and the, and the title about, you know, if it's about, Hey, um, look at these DJI microphones, they sound amazing. And then the first part of it is, 
you know, five minutes of you going to Walmart to buy them. Like, that's not what people clicked on the video for. <laughs> and you just want to get to that point and people will enjoy that. They'll, they'll appreciate that because their time is valuable. So we have made the biggest mistake of all. We have been talking for like 40 minutes so far. And uh, and people will probably won't be listening to us anymore uh, uh, because they, they are used to two minute shorts. That's right. Well, no, podcasts are different because, you know, people go for long drives. They, have, they sit in traffic jams and they want to hear voices and it comforts them to hear uh, people that they like to, to hear um, talking about things that they like to, to listen to. So... I think that that's a different a different thing altogether. Podcasts are really cool. And, and by the way, I have a kind of a podcast uh, channel where it used to be a podcast. Now it's more of a live stream where we just go live um, and we call it YouTube Uncut. So it's like um, just the conversations like we're having right now, but um, we mm -hmm. talk about being YouTubers. Um, there's more people, other YouTubers that are on there as well. They do live streams and talk about different things. I'll be on uh, doing a watch party for the new DJI release uh, tonight and this morning, whatever time for you. I don't know. <laughs> and yeah, so if you want to check that out, that's uh, always fun just to have uh, you know, a chat in a live stream and stuff like that. That could be my surprise link in the show notes. <gasps> oh, surprise links. <laughs> Love those. <laughs> Sorry, I need to quote you all the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I like I like the surprise links uh, aspect of it, and I actually never thought anybody would ever click on them. And some people would be like, "Hey, I saw you used my video for the surprise link," and I'm like, "Oh, that's mm -hmm. you clicked on it. Amazing!" <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah. it happens. I, I, when I saw that, I was again hooked because it's it's a part of what what I see with the, your videos developing over over time. Uh, that the surprise link thing, and. And it's so nice. It's so it's generous in a way, but it also makes you as a uh, you as a listener, as a uh, um, YouTube uh, uh, audience, uh, curious, right? And it's a nice way to do think these things. So so that's I like that a lot. Um, you were just saying that you have to do lots of videos, care about. Uh, quality but don't over quality the yes. thing right yeah. because you have to sort of launch it and then do better next time for example yeah yeah and th there's some huge youtubers out there and you know their production quality is subpar you know like which is fine that's that's their thing so yeah you don't don't think oh this has got to be hollywood you know <laughs> you, it's yeah. just got to be youtube but but see what what i think What what drives you to keep on doing these things? Because uh, first of all, you're a creative type, right? You do music gigs all the time. Um, you, there, there might there's, there might be something in you that is sort of a, a non music type, a non creative type that is sort of me very mythological and, and does things right. <laughs> um, but also, it's sometimes it's hard to do these things and push out a new video every week or every other day or stuff like that. What keeps you going? Uh, I like to look at this whole YouTube venture as my video game. So I, you know, I played the Xbox games and stuff like that when I was uh, in college. You know, just spending hours and upon hours with my friends, and you know, you you level up and all that stuff, and that's kind of what YouTube has become. It's like. How, all right, this is my game. This is my challenge. How do I level up to the next subscriber milestone? How do I level up to getting more people to watch my videos? Um, you know, is like learning how to make the proper YouTube uh, thumbnails and titles to get the clicks. And that's kind of what drives it. It's just that, okay, what's going to happen tomorrow? Who knows? Uh, a video can have a million views overnight. You never know, like that kind of stuff. So it's it's a little bit of like, yeah, just it's my video game. I spend time doing that instead of playing video games now. <laughs> okay, so it's kind of the thing to get to a next level. That, yeah. And you can you can define the level yourself in a way. Yeah. I mean you you can track your progress. It's just a very it's a it's very interesting, you know, to kind of figure out it's like a puzzle. It's like you're you're piecing it together and you're seeing it finally come into view and you're like just and you're getting better and better and faster at it because you kind of know what pieces to look for. So Yeah, it's a, it's a game. Interesting. Uh, I, I never had that perspective, um, but I can 
Yeah, I need to think about that. Uh, okay, great, Danny. You have uh, you have lots to do today. Uh, you were talking about uh, uh, your other YouTube channel, for example, that you will doing something tonight, mm -hmm. uh, which is which will do a link in the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> link in the show notes. <laughs> Right. We'll have a transcription of, uh, of our conversation on um, on the um, web page uh, for the for the podcast. And um, I'm very thankful uh, that you have taken the time for this conversation because uh, it, it was fun for me. It was so fun for me, too. Thank you for that. Thank you. And uh, it's it's uh, it's something that that will help others. I think um, maybe not even not not only YouTubers, because I think that's a good example of what, what you're doing for other people people that have a very close or need a close re, re, uh, relation to their customers. Well, that's uh, that's the idea. Entertain too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, thank you very much for taking the time. Good luck with uh, with uh, the next getting to the next levels uh, right. on your YouTube game. That's right. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for listening to the 2.5 Conversations Connecting Innovators. You can subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts. A transcript of this episode and additional information is also available. The link is in the show notes. My name is Klaus. I'm an innovation coach in Baden-Württemberg in the southwest of Germany. This is the 2.5.